Welcome back to the Banner Saga here on Serious Gaming on the hard difficulty. I kinda expected that. And it will keep going down. Ah, a godstone right here. Good. I love this music. It's just gorgeous. You find a surprising number of people camped out at the Godstone. They've been here quite a while, ever since the, st uh, the sun stopped. Apparently they think Radomir, the sun god, has come back. And they're worshipping him despite the bleak environment. They welcome the caravan, mingling and swapping stories with others while you rest. They have almost nothing of value to trade, but their leader approaches and offers to let you join in their tribute. Ask what this tribute involves. Gold land theory, one says, showing you a golden liquid in a silver bowl. He places some on his chest, which almost sounds like it's sizzling. It explains for clenched that it's, it's a gift from the sun god, an oil that burns like the sun and lets them see things more clearly. Try it yourself, why not? Bravely, you give the offer a chance. When you apply the oil, your skin starts to burn like a hot brand, but you bear it. It doesn't reveal any secrets of the universe, but the worshippers are impressed by your courage and give you more oil to take. Alright, inspect the godstone before moving on. Nobody can really agree on what Radomir looked like, as fond as he was of his own isolation. He never directly con contacted humanity. Most think he was a serpent that lived in the sun, and it's not uncommon to hear speak of seeing the tail of a great creature slipping through the thin clouds on a sunny day. Radomir was always one of the lucky gods, kind of who people thank for good weather, healthy livestock and a good harvest. Despite all that, the biggest mystery has always been how his godstone came to be found at the bottom of the dried out lake. After some rest you continue on. The sun god worshippers are keen to stay, so you pack your things and return to the road. And I gained that! Why not? I'll try it myself. <laughs> All right, so moving deeper into the woods. I might have to rest for a day or two. Fifteen percent chance for twice uh, the strength damage. Well, fuck. <laughs> Why the hell not? And I give a let this one. Why the fuck not? <laughs> right? It's uh, it would be dumb, very dumb of me to not uh, use that. All right, uh, moving onward. I need to rest for about two or three days to be able to recover uh, my morale. Several people have noticed black vultures circling above the caravan, taking advantage of the light snowfall. They pose no threat, but they have a visible impact on the mood of your clansmen. The next time you look back, Oddleaf is firing arrows into the air, which nearly tagged the birds once or twice. Get lost, no dead down here, she shouts, she shouts to nobody in particular. What are you doing? What does it look like, Rook? Target practice. She fires another arrow and vulture shudders and falls out to the sky with a blue feathered arrow protruding from it. She recovers the bird laughing, inspecting its feathers. You know, she says Alif, scanning the caravan, a lot of these women, they could do this. You can tell from the look in the, her eyes, she's excited about the idea. I think I'm going to start training them how to fight, she says. Uh, encourage Alif to train the women. We can always use more fighters, you tell Alif. If a let is any proof, you know how to train someone to bow. Alif gives you a smile. She heads off to some of the women in the caravan, showing them the vulture she shut down. And there's gonna be um, you're gonna get uh, fighters from this. All right, one more day. I know it's it was kind of painful to have to do that. It's like three days of supplies, uh, but whatever. All right, moving onward. I probably should have waited until someone needed some rest anyway. Ahead you find what appears to be a good number of peasants surrounded by brigands. One of the armed men looks over his shoulders and says, Gods be damned, this is all I need. Listen, don't interfere, and one of these supply wagons is yours. While remaining silent, what's going on here? 
Nothing concerning you, he replies, and before you start telling me otherwise, these are my clansmen. They fought the Quran off with every scrap of food in the village. Now all I want is you to move on. Take So take your share or don't. Hmm. Draw your weapon. Yeah. Alright, so we will fight and we will kill a bunch of people. The renown is worth it. You will get some supplies as a result as well. Uh, maybe I'm coming. I'm gonna regret this, but who knows? Damage, not too shabby. There you go. Well, alert is almost useless. I should have really leveled up on a force or something. Or Echo, actually. Leveling up on F is a waste of time because you won't keep them. Something I learned the hard way. Ah, no. He will die. Brothers are gonna be injured quite severely. Free damage. You can just walk past them, by the way. What the? Yes, 
9 damage. I hope Rook doesn't die. <laughs> he could. Yeah, he's promoted at long last. I'll use Rook to uh, take down his armor and then finish him off with Ivory. Ah! Done. Good, a bit of renown. Maybe I'll get some food out of this. With the brigands either fallen or fled the peasants they left behind, thank you profusely. It's true what he said, one tells you. We took the food and left me. The gods have mercy on me. I let them die. They has only joined the caravan. Well, you gained some clansmen. Maybe I could reload before that. Ah, uh, no. Oh well. I gained some renown, so that's probably more for the clansmen. Not so much, not so much. You know what, I'm not gonna risk for morale. Scar reports with a n nearly frozen child. I almost stepped on her in the snow. Looks like she must have been running from something. He says, patches of blue mottle her pale skin, but her chest rises and falls ever so slightly. Even just carrying her along could kill her in a state like this as a woman. We could be in danger here. Stop the caravan for rest and tend to the girl. As the caravan tents rise, a fire is built beside the girl who is covered in furs and ointments. Progress is slow, but you... You s uh, soon you see the girl alive enough to sh swallow a letter and some heated broth. When you wake the next day, a healer tells you the girl should be fine in time. Um, Wormtho was never the kind of place someone would build a town. Fittingly, the Var living here aren't known for welcoming visitors with open arms. Yeah. Well. I'll have to rest for a few days in somewhere. Anyway. Keep moving. The Varl will find you before you see them. Not surprising with this many people behind you. With weapons drawn, they demand to know why you're here. But back down when Ivor tells him he's come to see someone named Krum. Well, I'll be damned. Krum, it's been a long time. Yeah, it has. So what's, uh, what brings Ingvar to Wormto with his very own village of humans? Bad news, Dredge are coming down from the north. We barely made it this far. This is not your news. Come on, we have food. We'll discuss this more in the meat house. As you follow the old Varl into their meager town, you catch him quietly saying, if it were anyone else. Yeah, I've talked to the warriors here. I'll be honest with you. Half want to go north and find out what happened at Blot's uh, Bulkar. Something we should go to Grafheim instead. None of them are happy you're here. What do you think? If I had it my way, I'd stay here and let Dredge come. But you made this a problem, didn't you? We can't feed this many people for long, even if they don't eat much. This is a viral town. Most of us take care of ourselves. You've got women, children. We could pitch in, make this place livable. It doesn't work like that. These viral here are uh, these viral are here to get away from civilization, not make one. Scrum recall. Uh, it won't be long before the dredge are here too. No, it won't. If there's one thing one sh we should do, it's tell J Jorant what's going on. Who's Jorant? Varl King. Well, as close to one as we have. Ingvar, where do you find these people? Stay here and rest, but once yours are ready to go, we do. I'm going to see off those who want to head north, but I'll join you to Grafheim. More travel? No, we've already come so far. Stop pouting early, even if Jorn won't listen to a tired old Val on me. I have a feeling they'll pay attention to your friend Ingvar here. They'll listen to Ivor? Ha! He hasn't told you. Of course he hasn't. Do what you need to, but don't be long. Alright. 
So, Krum, can you spare a moment? Mostly no, but I'll try. I never had the moment to thank you for your hospitality. Consider it done then. How did you get all these viral to follow you? Respect, young one. After second great war, wasn't much for me left to do, so I started training other viral to fight. Got tired of that, made a place in Wormtail. They still come calling, even with no wars to speak of. Seems like them each might be changing though, don't it? So who is Ingvar? Ha, huh, I'm not surprised he never told you. I'm just surprised he can stand being around anyone at all. Your friend was one of us long ago. I mean, dredge bashing type. He was called Ingvar then. And if you want to know why he changed his name, bet, best ask him yourself. I'm too old to peddle and gossip. I bet you have some incredible stories. I might, I might. Or I could be the most boring viral you ever met. Depends on how much you like killing dredge. Ask me again someday. I might tell you about the time we filled the dead ox with whale teeth. And why? <laughs> Any is them fighting dredge? Depends how much you know. They're all armor. Tap them hard enough. Uh, tap, tap them hard enough through and it'll shatter. Line up a whole row of slag and they'll explode on each other all, all the way down. You get in a big brawl, have your time spent setting them up for it. If you see one bang his axe like uh, turning a fork, try to kill him quickly. Sometimes the slags uh, he's calling won't even show up. What, what do you ask? I best leave you to your business. I suppose you should take care, friend of Ingvar. Alright. So, I should buy some supplies, I suppose. Um, confirm. Yes. Right, I'm gonna leave. For a moment, I'm gonna settle for good morale, and I'm gonna get better. So, Grafim is quite a few days out, says Chrome. But anything, wor nothing worse than crossing the waste, I imagine. If there's anywhere you might be safe from the dredge, it's there. You steal yourself for another long march, and half the town of Wormtop joins you. 20 supplies, that's not much. It just gives me a day of supplies. Which is just not enough. As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon and a few tents. A woman cries out, My boy! and points to a burning tent closest to it, the outlying viral. Two of the giants are motionless, start staring at the spread fire with terror in their eyes. Make an effort to save the rest of the supplies. Okay, he's quenching the flames and saving most of the food. After the fires die out, you find a woman shopping at the side of her dead son. You glance towards the shame silent. Right, let's try and put out the fires. First and foremost. Uh, I'm gonna try and organize the peasants. Yes, I'm gonna let the boy die if that's what it takes to keep those supplies intact. You look away from petrified farl and rush to help others dip blankets into water barrels to come at the fire. Right, so... You have a choice, save the supplies, save the boy... Right, or try and yell at the varl. Maybe yelling at the varl will work, hmm. Maybe, I doubt it. <laughs> they hate fire, they're really afraid of fire. I don't know why, but... Right, so the Varl will not help even when you command them to. I've got 63 Varl, 147 fighters. That's the largest amount of Varl you're ever gonna be able to get here. Just so you know. What in the depths was that about you muttered to yourself? Something about the fire, Madeleine tells you. I've heard of this before, they don't like it. Doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. No, it doesn't. And morale is going down, slowly but surely. You lost, you ask? He just a leather strap on his head and says, No, are you? He jumps up and scuffles towards caravan. His tattered clothes revealing no weapons. 
Who are you and what are you doing? Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons, but I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, he throws his beard over his shoulder and puffs his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales, asking, What are we waiting for? Lead the way. Who are you and what are you doing out here? Call me Un nar or anything else you like the old man says a man goes where he pleases doesn't he this stern look is more comical than intimidating but you stop looking for answer you're welcome to join if you can keep pace keep pace the old man puffs through his mustache no fleeter than old Unar and husbands mind you wives <laughs> i'm cursed with the golden tongue not silver the caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again so i didn't really gain anything from that did i You haven't seen Alette for much of the day. When you do find her, she's returning to camp alone from a fair distance away, looking rather sullen. She keeps her eyes on the ground as you approach. Ask her what's going on. I feel like things are changing so quickly, she eventually confines. It's just, it's not just that. Everything's going so wrong. I've been talking to Echo a lot. This gets to it near your attention. What has he been telling you? He told me of how, how he and Nofnef are... Ken Echol had a sister who married Onef, but she died a long time ago. They found they've been bound since, but then Onef left without him, just left him with behind without war. That's why he came after us. Confirm Echol's story. Eventually find Onef back at the camp and relate the story. Is that is that what Echol told you, replies Onef? Then he sighs. It's true about his sister. She died of a fever when we were just married. Surprised he opened like, like that. So I left him in Frostfeather, he continues. He'd be first fine one day, ready to kill his men or the next time. Times he would. I'd, I'd make the same decision t tomorrow. Let the issue drop. He feels certain Alec got the message. Instead of stirring up more trouble, he decided to let the issue drop in, tight, in a tighter watch on Echo. I should rest for a few days at least. What do we have? Hmm. Another godstone, I guess. I suppose 115 days. I've been here for a long time. A very long time, in fact. Things are pretty dire. The godstone of Mark looms into view. Upon it are of the great ocean beast. Jagged stones jut out of the snow like shark fins. It's hard to imagine the north felling waste being filled with water at one time, but the godstone stands as a reminder of the vast lake it used to look across. A blessing, shouts one of the men in your caravan, holding up what looks like a silver coin. It's a fish scale, he says, pointing out the rainbow pattern that chosen sunlight. Soon a curious child has found another hiding in the stone, then the third is discovered. Let the caravan take their time. By the end of the second day, the scavenger hunt still continues um, unabated. You, and you, even you are starting to feel something in the back of your mind, like you need to have one of the scales. You shake tough, uncertain whether to let this continue. Get, let them continue. If it's another day before the fervor uh, calms down, and you think there must have been something unnatural about it, because when the last scale was found, the obsession suddenly ceased. On the next morning, one of the men presents you a gleaming coat of mail to you. We made this from the scales, he says, grinning. We graciously accept the gift in the caravan. Right. Oh, two days of supplies for an item. Kind of worth it, I suppose, in some respects. Probably not in others, but hey, that's it. If the supply situation gets... Olive calls you over, grinning. A row of women holding bows of uh, differing age and experience line up before a row of trees in the distance. They fire, doing an impressive do job of hitting the trunks. I think they're ready to have fell some dredge with feathers. One woman still hasn't shot her arrow. She stands perfectly still. The other wa others watch, just as the wind uh, shifts. Shift, she lets go, and her arrow flies not into one of the trees, but a snow rabbit that had scurried out from underneath. Dinner, she says, smiling. Group of men from the caravan approach. Listen here, says one. Practice all you want. My one isn't fighting dredge. The other men agree in chorus. We don't want to see a battlefield full of dead wives and daughters. 
Stand by the women becoming fighters. The men argued their point but eventually relent. Thanks, says Anif. To be honest, I, it was harder than I expected, but the more people who can hold their own, the better. The women returned to camp not just as clansmen, but as fighters. So the morale has been improved. Mm -hmm. So I gained a number, right, uh, god scale, whew, that's useful, free armor, fucking hell, yeah, right, uh, can I level anyone up, I can level him up, and I will, hmm, Right. Yes, I have a bunch of level one fighters, and I could level them up. I will try and level um, the Varl up at least. While walking, the words of a mother song reach you, it's soothing and once and about your current journey. When she finishes, a man begins a tale of his own verse. The one in responds with another poem, and the caravan slows to listen to the entertaining competition. Join the crowd and cheer on the competitors. No, join with a verse of your own. You may make both contestants add your own spin on their tails. At last, you end with a joke at your own expense, and the peasants wildly applaud. Yes, it was worth it. Good morale. You need ways to increase morale, don't you? Yes. Ah, uh, well, it was worth it. For a bit. You hear a whistle on the wind that spot a line, a long line of varl up ahead, heading towards you. Right behind them is a swarm of dredge and a trail of bodies leading off in the distance. Get down there, barks Krum. Okay, I'm going to pause the video right here. Costine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more.